Okay, today we're going to talk about dimensional analysis and one of the easiest possible ways to do it. It involves what I call three and a half steps that you can use every time and always get the right answer when you're converting uh, one unit to the other. Oftentimes in daily life, we have a little button we can press to convert from kilometers per hour to miles per hour or whatever, uh, but oftentimes we don't have a little button like that, so it's best to learn how to do it. Uh, ourselves. All right, so just to sort of give you an idea of what dimensional analysis is, it's a tool that turns one unit into another unit, and it's very simple. Um, it's a good thing, too, because it turns out the United States is one of the uh, only like three countries in the entire world that does not use the metric system. So that runs, uh, that lets you run into problems sometimes when you're doing, uh, when you're working scientific problems. Uh, so sometimes you do, in fact, not as often as you might think, but sometimes you do, in fact, have to convert from pounds to kilograms or something like from ounces to grams. But there are other times that just use a lot more routine things that you'll run across in a class. For example, something like cents to dollars or feet to yards or inches to feet. Other times it's really everyday stuff like number of eggs to dozens of eggs or dozens of donuts. Uh, to number of donuts. And um, the thing that we're building up to for the next video actually is being able to talk about number of grams to number of moles and back and forth between that. And a mole is a unit in chemistry that's the concept is exactly like a dozen, except it's bigger by quadrillions and quadrillions. So we're going to work on everyday things first and then move on to uh, moles after that. But the main thing that all, all these uh, different things we looked at have in common is their calculation they involve calculations that have to do with real world things and this is the big concept as far as catching yourself if you make a wrong an uh, wrong answer if you get a wrong answer and allowing yourself to be able to go back and correct it because unlike in algebra where if you get an answer that says x equals eight well you have no idea what that means in the real world it doesn't possibly may not be, mean anything but with real world things like pounds, kilograms, things like that, if you get, uh, if you work a problem that you come out with a 78 pound professional football player, uh, you know, wants to cal calculate a weight and you calculate a 78 pound professional football player, more than likely you got the wrong answer somewhere unless he's a member of the Hobbit League or something. All right. Well, um, the main thing that I wanted to make sure uh, to guard against in these uh, methods is probably everyone has had this happen. You've prepped for a test and you study it really well and then you get on the test and sometimes this will happen, not as often as the other. Sometimes you'll you'll freeze up at the start of the problem or far more frequently you get right in the middle of it and you have no idea uh, you know where to go next, getting stuck in the middle. And the idea here is that the, the simple steps will keep you on the straight and narrow. Uh, and if you work these same steps every time, uh, you'll get the right answer every time, hopefully. So I want to uh, compare this to working a type of problem that pretty much everybody, anybody watching this would know how to do, which is, say, converting uh, 40 quarters into dollars. We all know what that is. It's $10. But the question to ask is, well, you know, how do you get that? And most people say, well, you know, I did it in my head. What we want to do is to take the the miniature little steps that we use in a problem like that and be able to apply it to any problem. So if you started with 40 quarters, that's, we're going to call that the given value throughout the rest of the presentation here. You know that four quarters is equal to one dollar. That's part of how you did it. Uh, that's called a conversion factor. Uh, it tells how many of one unit is equal to how many of another unit. Uh, you knew that if you divided 40 by 4 that you get 10. And you knew that the answer would have to be in dollars. Now, the chances are extremely good that nobody went through the trouble of doing this, but uh, what they did essentially e equaled or amounted to uh, taking 40 quarters and realizing that you had to divide by 4, and you also realized that you uh, your answer had to come out in dollars. So, essentially did that. Now, in the very, very unlikely chance that you would have gotten, uh, again, this is called a conversion factor, that you would have gotten your conversion factor upside down, which is an extremely uh, common mistake in dimensional analysis. 
if you had done that, you would have gotten, you would have punched that into your calculator the wrong way because you would have thought that you would have had to multiply by four and set it in five. And you would have gotten, the number spit out of your calculator would have been 160, which most, most people would have caught. But on the off chance they didn't, if uh, they paid attention to the units, they would have seen that they got in a ridiculous unit that didn't make any sense, such as quarter square per dollar. Uh, and be able to tell immediately that that's not the right answer. And we're going to use that same approach and work on other types of problems. So we, um, we're, we'll, you know, we just started out with something that you can do in your head. Uh, most of the ones that you're going to see in any beginning chemistry or, uh, class or any other type, you won't be able to do in your head. But if you remember these same three and a half steps, you'll be completely good to go and you won't get uh, stuck anywhere. And uh, there won't be any dimensional analysis problem you can't do, at least not with converting units. All right, so here are the three and a half steps. Um, and we're going to use an example problem here that probably most people can't do in their head immediately. How many yards is in 87 feet? The first step is to decide what conversion factor you need. Uh, that basically is not going to be a problem here because we know we're going from uh, feet to yards, and we all know that three feet equals one yard. Oftentimes you'll run across uh, somewhere where you might pick the wrong conversion factor. It's a very common mistake. Second step, write down the given value and the conversion factor lined up so the units you want to get rid of will cancel. So there's our given value, there's our conversion factor, and that's all you have to do for that step. And then the last step is kind of the business end of, of it is uh, cancel the terms and do the math. And so we take 87 yards, yards is the only unit that's left, and divide that by three, and then ends up being 29 yards. And then the last critical step is what I call step three and a half, check for stupid answers. And of course, this isn't calling anybody stupid, it's just check for answers that you can see readily that you know don't make any sense. Does, you know, do the answer in the units make sense? And if they don't, first thing you need to ask if you're using the right conversion factor, that's not really an issue here with uh, everyday sort of problems. But the other one might be, did you get your conversion factor upside down? So a very common example of a incorrect, incorrectly worked problem, it's not so common in feet and yards, but just using this as an example, is getting the conversion factor upside down so that the feet don't cancel, and so that you end up multiplying 87 by three, then you get 261, that's what's spit out of your calculator. And if you don't catch that right away, and most people probably would catch it, if you don't catch that right away, you, if you pay attention to your units, you end up getting this gibberish answer of feet squared per yard, gibberish units of feet squared per yard, which don't make any sense and should tell you right away that you did something wrong. All right, so the, the uh, big message here, always write down your units. You're going to see that multiple times. So here's another one. Uh, Linda buys 2.5 dozen apples because she really likes apples. For some reason, People in math problems tend to really like produce for some reason. So how many total apples did she buy? Now, we know the conversion factor here because we know what a dozen is, but if you don't know the conversion factor right off, uh, you know, right off the top of your head, more than likely the problem is almost always going to give it to you. All right, decide what conversion factor you need. Just said we know what the conversion factor is. One dozen is 12 of anything. Step two, write down the given value and the conversion factor lined up so the units you want to get rid of will cancel. So there's the given value. There's the conversion factor. You notice this time the number's on top, but we're lining it up so that the dozens will cancel out in the next step. And of course, the next step is cancel terms and do the math. All right, so this time we are multiplying. The last time multiplication was a mistake. This time we are multiplying it. So two and a half times 12 is 30 apples. And then the last step, the step three and a half, check for stupid answers. Well, does 30 apples seem like a reasonable answer? Does that sound like about two and a half times a dozen? Well, yeah, it does. So, but just in case, you know, we, we always want to make sure that the answers, uh, that the units make sense. They do. Uh, they did come out in apples. Are you using the right conversion factor? We are. And did you get your conversion factor upside down? So had we done so, we would be able to see it. Uh, pretty well in this case because they've, you know, if we, the apples were on bottom, so the dozens wouldn't cancel out. Uh, and we punched that into the calculator 2.5 divided by 12, that would end up being 0 0.21, which I think anybody would catch right away. But if they didn't, 
a uh, dozen squared per apples makes absolutely no sense. It's gibberish. So again, I want to emphasize again and again, if you pay attention to your units, you can tell when you make a mistake. All right, so um, one last one. Uh, people sometimes buy figs when they're trying to lose weight because figs are high in fiber. They're a good source of potassium, and they're so disgusting that no one wants to eat them. So mom buys 0 0.70 pounds of figs. If 2.2 pounds equals 1 kilogram, how many kilograms of figs is this? All right, so step one is still decide what conversion factor you need. Now, the uh, flashing red light on this one as far as what the conversion factor is, is that equal sign. If there's an equal sign there, it's almost certainly the conversion factor, and it is, in fact, in this case. All right, step two, write down the given value and the conversion factor lined up so the units you want to get rid of will cancel. So there's the given value, there's the conversion factor, and then we just move on to the last one. Cancel terms and do the math. We're canceling terms, the pounds go out. The only thing we've got left is kilograms, so we take 0 0.70 kilograms divided by 2.2, and we end up with something that looks like that. All the other ones have been that nice, nice round numbers, but I just want to point out that occasionally you run across something where you have to keep up with the significant figures. Since there's two significant figures in both those terms, We'll end up using two significant figures here. And then lastly, check for stupid answers. I think we've already gone into enough detail about the potential ones there. You're not really going to uh, make a problem with the conversion factor if they just give you the conversion factor like that. But you might well get it uh, upside down. And here's where you can really catch yourself. You notice here the pounds don't cancel out if you do this incorrectly. Um, and so if you punch that into your calculator, you'll get 1.5 or 1.5 uh, something but uh, 1.5 approximately. And if you're not familiar with metric and English system of units uh, conversions, you might, you might miss that one. But if you are keeping up with your units, you'll end up pound squared per kilogram, which is absolute gibberish, and you'll know that you did something wrong. All right, so again, always write down your units, okay? So we started out with a problem that elementary school students could do in their head. And we ended up doing a problem with metric conversion that probably you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't know how to do dimensional analysis. And in the next video, we're going to take these same tools and use them in, in chemistry problems. So to summarize, uh, the three and a half steps to use them every time, you're not going to freeze up, and hopefully you'll get the answer right. Uh, most common mistake is to get the wrong conversion factor. That doesn't happen that often in everyday sorts of problems like we've been doing. Second most common mistake is you get the conversion factor upside down. And both these mistakes can be avoided by, now this is going to be, next one's going to be a shock, always writing down your units. And then secondly, always doing that step three and a half stupid answer check to make sure your answer makes sense. So I'm going to close with this. And since I'm lacking the letters that I need to make a good the end, there it is. That's it.